get these baits on there. Yo, my bracelet just got caught on the line when she launched the little J hook. This thing's reckless, dude. The walkie talkies are broken, so I had to stop her by uh, stopping the spool. She just stopped. She knew I was stopping her, and she'll throw off this front bait. Just felt it go limp. She already dropped this one. She's still running that one. We'll let this one sink down for a second. Then I'll come back and pull the slack out of it. Make sure this one has got plenty of line left. Applying a little bit of pressure to this one to pull the slack out. Strong current out there. Running this one a little bit sketchy. Line's getting pretty low, but I can reel it back in once she drops. All right, so after she dropped it, I take the rod, pop it in gear a little bit, pull the slack out so I can feel the weight drag it on the floor. We don't want no bow in the line. There it is. We don't have a whole lot of mono on these rods right here, so it's not a giant bow, but uh, I can feel my weight dragging. Stick it in the holder. Make sure the clicker's on, and then you want to adjust your lever drag to where that's a little bit too loose. The current's taking it. You just want it just to be not getting taken by the current but easy enough for a shark to run with it and to make sure that it's not too tight to get pulled out of your fence bike all right we're in there boys See if Ellie can ride one in like Kawabunga. move our operation up a little bit. I think we may have a taker on this one, boys. Something's messing with it.
You know what I just noticed about this rail, Al? Hell, yesterday you said your hand was uh, disengaging the the knob. Uh-oh. Mine, uh, it keeps knocking the clicker off by accident. See? I didn't do that, it just knocked it off. Feels like a decent one. Take this and Quick in and out, tag the female sand tiger. She got the male yesterday. I just got the female. Uh, she was probably seven, eight foot or seven foot, like same size as Ellie's, maybe a little fatter. Um, Had beautiful like blotches on it, markings. It was really pretty. Got the little stinger hook clipped off. That thing will rust right out. It was already rusted. Sketchy release, dude. That big wave hit me on the back. Yeah, and that, it's like a little bar right here. So right now there's a bunch of little waves I couldn't way. tell which way she turned, right or left, so I, was, I just woo, got out of there. Me and Ellie are both on the board. Yeah. Boom! Alright Joe, tell us about your setup. Uh, this season we decided to go lighter, so instead of 30 wides, 50 wides, 80 wides, or 9 knots, we dropped it down to just 50 size reels. It's pretty much for like offshore trolling. Some people I think cast for like big pelagics on it. I got uh, 500 yards of 50 pound test bull buster braid on there with about i'd say 50 or 80 yards maybe not even that much of 80 pound pink bull buster mono which performed very well uh the setup is a seven foot medium heavy shimano talavera extra fast tip i could feel everything a lot of times when we're using those bigger rods you can't feel enough but man this thing you can really feel it so I'm, this is the way I'm going to be going a lot and um, I'm confident I can stop anything on uh, this as long as I got enough line and it's not like some crazy huge shark I'm going to stop it I'm putting the brakes on him and uh, Ellie can too she's got the Speedmaster 50 the number two same uh, setup 500 and the 80 pound um, mono same rig we always use 700 pound test the reason we use 700, well, you know, these sharks, some of them are nowhere near 700, but it's a lot easier to grab and to leader for the end game when you've got uh, such a thick 
mono, you know what I mean? So you can grab that, it's real easy. That other stuff, you tend to, it's slip in and you want to wrap it around your hands and things get sticky and dangerous. Yeah. I have way less than 80 yards of the mono top shot on mine. I could only fit like Yeah, like the Daiwa 50 holds more line. Her spool's a little bit shallower. Mine uh, has about 50 to 80. Hers probably has like 30 feet or something like that. Yo, it's just me and Ellie out here doing this, man. Like, we're actually trained professionals. We've been doing it for like five, six, seven years now. So if you come out here and try this, you got to know what you're doing. And it's good to come out with someone who has experience. Ellie still got a bait out. Let's go. I could tie another one on. We got chunks out. All right, Ellie is big hooked up. Big hooked up. Uh-oh, the little magic trick happened when the shark on the end of your line, his weight disappears. Sometimes they run straight in though. Yeah, I'm hoping it's still on there, but I really don't feel the weight anymore. All right guys, the unfortunate happened. The shark got off. There's this big prominent sandbar out in front of us that we've been hoisting stuff over. Uh, Max Drag just couldn't get this shark over it. Low tide. Yeah, and it's low tide. Joe had to put hands on, try to, you know, give a little bit of extra pull. And uh, I tried to lead her it because her Max Drag wasn't enough. And uh, uh, not couldn't handle it. Yep, it, it popped right at the uni to uni. But we're both on the board. It was a success. Now we're thinking about going and hitting the Stingray spot real quick. Because we still got a bag of Bunka left right there. So and we're on a bait dilemma. We need to get some bait for next weekends. Yeah. So we're going to try to do a bait hustle now, guys. Yeah.